Thank you, Alec. I, I hope you can all hear me. Uh, uh, it was uh, my privilege to be able to wear the most comfortable outfit to this uh, event today. Um, so I, I'm going to start off with some thank yous. First of all, uh, I really need to thank the Board of Trustees. We have uh, several trustees present. Uh, Susie uh, has been a huge supporter of this entire facility. Uh, Dick Booth has supported uh, this facility. And now we know the entire board has supported this facility, not only by voting to build it, but also by contributing to it and helping us uh, as we planned and then built it. As you all know, we built it in two phases. The t-shirt I'm wearing was actually the t-shirt that we gave out for the dedication of phase one, which was the basketball facility uh, and the auxiliary gym and the fitness center. Uh, many of you may remember we built that building rapidly, uh, very rapidly. We built it in roughly one year. And one of the things that uh, caught the eye of the design team when we were selecting uh, the architectural firms uh, was that David Demecki, who spoke to you a few minutes ago, said that we could build that building in one year, and we did. So uh, that was phase one. Now, phase two is obviously a bigger and more complicated building, but again, the board has been totally supportive. We uh, could not have been, in my judgment, uh, more lucky. We also were lucky, and this will sound a little odd, but we are also lucky to have kind of a weird uh, area of land to put it on. Uh, usually athletic facilities are built as big boxes. Ours, we could not do that because we have a railroad that we can't move, and we have a football field that we didn't want to move. And so the net result was we had to build around those constraints and we have successfully done it, and in my judgment, produced a more beautiful building because of the oddness uh, of the site. I also want to thank our in-house people. I'll start with Jonathan Brand, who is in Rome, Italy. He emailed me this morning, and he said he wished he could be here. He was the original vice president on phase one. Then Marcy Sorter, who has worked really hard on phase two, and then the people who have spent the most time at the college on phase two are Mark Godar, and I want to give a hand to Mark and thank him. We also want to thank Newman Brothers, who have uh, pulled this off in a way that has worked well with our own staff and also with our architects. Um, but most of all, I want to thank the students who for 12 years have lifeguarded for me in the pool. Uh, now, we have a list of records here uh, on that. One of the records that they should put up there is that, as Ken Christensen said, before I became president, the lifeguards were chronically late or you know, occasionally didn't appear. Since I've been president, Lifeguards have failed to appear, and I swim almost every day. They failed to appear only three times. So that says something about the dedication of our students and also Aaron, who has coordinated that. I also want to recognize and have him stand up, Ray Obermiller. Probably in Grinnell history, no one has spent more time in various Grinnell pools than Ray Obermiller, and that, that itself is a testimony. But it hasn't just been time, it's been quality time. He has really dedicated himself to our swimmers and to the college, and we're very grateful. And uh, someone who also has spent a tremendous time, uh, I want to recognize Erin Hurley uh, for her work. But most of all today, I want to recognize Charles Benson Baer of the class of 1939. There is a biography written by me that I hope you'll all pick up and read 
about this uh, amazing person. He uh, started in Washington County, Iowa. His uh, grandfather and great-grandfathers were settlers, original settlers in Washington County. He grew up on a, a farm that his father had. Uh, if you read between the lines, his father was a very successful farmer in Iowa for his time. Charlie came to Grinnell College, kind of a last minute dis decision. Uh, uh, he eventually went to the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy, and then he ended up working for Time Inc. his entire career. He was a quiet, reserved person, and at some point uh, early in my presidency, he and I were talking, I, I believe it was in Miami Beach, and he said, uh, you know, Russell, um, when I die, the college is going to get a lot of money. And th this was just Charlie. And I said, well, Charlie, what do you want us to do with it? Charlie, by the way, had served on the U.S. Olympic Committee. He'd also uh, worked for the Major League Baseball Asso Players Association. And he said, I don't, I don't have any particular wish uh, for it, but I want you to decide what to do. Then about two years before he died, we had already uh, started building, uh, in fact had completed phase one. I said, Charlie, you know, I may not be president, I can't promise it, but I believe we will um, probably use your bequest for the remainder of the athletic facility. Um, and, and so when he did die, and then when his partner died, Virtually 75% um, of a very large estate was left to Grinnell. So we are really honored, I am personally honored, to be able to say today that this entire complex will be named the Charles Benson Bear Class of 39 Recreation and Athletic Center. Now, as many of you know, you don't just name the whole uh, facility, and we are going to have further things named as we finish off uh, the facility and uh, the uh, fundraising for the facility. And we, we expect to have some really wonderful announcements to make in the not too distant future. But today, we wanted this to just be the Charlie Bear. Uh, day. He was a man who never wanted a lot of attention in life. Uh, if he was alive and we said we were going to do this, he would have been in Hong Kong for, for this event. He would not have wanted to have any kind of attention showered on him. But we are glad and we are particularly glad that it is athletics and that it is recreation. So Charlie was not, uh, he would say this, a great athlete. He wrestled when he was here. He told me once he believed he had lost every match that he had wrestled when he was here. But he, he said it was possible he might have won one, but he'd forgotten about it. Uh, but he was a great person who believed in wellness and taking care of yourself. Uh, and so it's fitting that this center be something that is for all of these purposes. So uh, that sort of my uh, concluding, we're going to have a plaque uh, for Charlie, obviously, and the building will be marked as the Bear Recreation and Athletic Center. And the last thing I wanted to say is that we have intentionally called it the Recreation Center first. Uh, varsity athletics is important at Grinnell and a huge number of our students participate. But this is a facility that will encompass recreation for everyone. Fitch will have his swimming class here. So I now also want to recognize John Fitch who I'm seeing over there. Uh, After Ray and probably Aaron, John has probably spent more time in the pool than any other person associated with Grinnell, even though he's really a soccer, uh, basketball, and you name it, coach. So 
Uh, those are the end of my remarks, and now uh, Mickey Munley will say a few more things.